So we should point out that this is the time of year that Shannon Bream anxiously awaits <laughs> <laughs> rulings from the Supreme Court. In fact, she's anxiously awaiting two that are coming tomorrow. But it was a different Supreme Court that has captured our attention this afternoon as the Pennsylvania Supreme Court vacates the conviction of convicted sex offender Bill Cosby, who's in that prison, the SCI Phoenix facility northwest of Pennsylvania. And Shannon, this, this was an announcement today that took everybody by surprise. John Spillbore saying it's not a surprise that it happened, but certainly the timing of it was a surprise. It is. I mean, of course, his legal team has been working around the clock on appeals, uh, as they should, and, and working on behalf of their client. But I think this was one of those things that was kind of under the radar. I mean, we knew that this was uh, pending at the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, but it had no tip off that it was coming today. And I think uh, the fact that it did drop like a bombshell has taken so many people by surprise. Yeah. Uh, Geraldo Rivera has uh, joined us uh, now. I don't know if he's on the phone or if he's Hi, actually, John. we can actually see him. Yeah, there, there we can is. actually see you. Uh, what, are you Hi, thinking, what are you thinking about what happened here, Geraldo? I got a sense of what your thinking is, but uh, you tell us. Well, the timing may be a surprise, but this is what I wrote on September 26, 2018. By most or all accounts, Bill Cosby was a sexual predator who left a trail of human misery and despair. Sentenced to 3 to 10 in state pen, he had it coming. Still, as an attorney, I predict his conviction will be overturned. Judge went way over the line in allowing unrelated victim testimony. That's from te September 26, to, uh, 2018. So, uh, John and Shannon, uh, uh, what they did to this guy was mob justice. First of all, the former state uh, DA promised that they would not bring a criminal case against him if he testified in a civil deposition. That was a, an express agreement he had with the former district attorney. That's number one. Number two, to bring in five unrelated victims to testify against him was so grotesquely unfair that it just seemed to me that this was mob justice, uh, John and Shannon. I really believe uh, that this was a result. How is he going to get back these two years that he has lost uh, now? This never should have happened. But at the same time, you say, how is he going to get back the two years that he has lost while being in prison? How will the 58 women who say he did to them what they say he did ever get back any sense of, of A, justice here, and any sense of ever being whole again? John, you're absolutely right. Our hearts go out to these victims. They should have gone to a prosecutor when their cases were ripe for justice. I am sorry that they are not uh, getting a, a sense of moral fulfillment now or rehabilitation or repair uh, for the damage that this man probably did to them. But that's not the way the criminal justice system works. In our system, there's an accuser, there's evidence, uh, the evidence is tested by the defense, and then the jury or the judge rules on it. In this case, they brought in people that were unrelated to this victim. Why just five? Why not 50? Why not all 50 that you, uh, uh, you say? Uh, were, uh, were harmed by this monster. He may be a predator. He may be everything that the prosecution and the victims allege he is. But this is a system whereby you must try this victim or this, you must try this perpetrator, alleged perpetrator, based on the evidence that the state has amassed and, uh, and the victim's testimony. In this case, they embellished it in a way that was wrongful. And I'll tell you something else, in my opinion. This will be reflected in Harvey Weinstein's appeal as well. They may be monsters. Me Too may have uh, exacted uh, uh, righteous justice in both those cases. But it's not the way the criminal justice system works. One or two supporting witnesses, that's what has been established in the precedent, uh, uh, you know, in case law. But to bring in five uh, it was so unfair. You know, uh, so the defense had to prepare about all five of them, to cross-examine all five of them, and bring out uh, contradictory evidence about all five. At some point, the weight, the weight just got the, uh, uh, the defense and crushed the defense. But uh, uh, Bill Cosby, I tell you, you can spit on him, do all you want. But he was unjustly convicted, in my opinion, John and Shannon. Yeah, and Gerardo, um, listen, I'm always going to be a big proponent of due process uh, for any case and every case because all of us are going to want it to be there, as I've said. When we are accused of anything, it is a foundational bedrock part of uh, our constitutional framework, of our judicial system here. But I think we also have to acknowledge, um, you know, you, we talk about this issue of statute of limitations. Why didn't the women come forward then? In either Cosby or Weinstein's case, these men were incredibly powerful at the height of their popularity. And you have to acknowledge and understand that for 
a woman, especially somebody who's, you know, an up-and-coming actress or a nobody by Hollywood standards, is going to find it nearly impossible to stand up against one of these men uh, in that situation. I mean, that's just the reality of it is overwhelming. No one's going to believe them. They're going to feel threatened. Um, so how do we remedy that part of the situation? Yes, we need to abide by the law. I will never stray from that. Um, but do we need to change our laws, different statutes of limitations? What can we do? Perhaps the statutes of limitations, which have been relaxed already, Shannon, as you know, but the venue for, you know, seeking redress of grievances must be fair and equitable. If you go to court, then you have to have evidence to support your claim. Not that he's a bad person, not that he may have done this to half of Hollywood, either of these two monsters may have done it to everybody on the block. I'm not suggesting that they're good people. I'm suggesting that if you've got a beef, if you've got a gripe, I understand all of the impediments for bringing a legal action. But you can tell your shrink, you could tell your wife, you can tell your lawyer, and you can, if you have no evidence to corroborate your case and you feel, uh, and you feel insecure about going that venue, then, criminal, then sue him. Sue him in a civil court where you don't have this huge weight of preponderance, uh, uh, the beyond a reasonable doubt. In a civil case, it's preponderance of the evidence. It's a, you sue the guy. Sue him yeah. or go and hold a press conference and, and tell people that he's a creep. Uh, you know, get, a, get the group of 50 together, you know, uh, through ads, through groups. You have the Me Too movement. You have all of these, these uh, activists. Get them to help you to, to make sure the monster is, is hobbled. Yeah. But you and can't we, bring a criminal case without evidence, Jack. Yeah. As you know. And, and, it, and it, it was very helpful, as you said, for those women to come together at the end to support each other, to lend validity and credence to what each of them were saying. Um, my fear is that some 19-year-old girl uh, is not going to want to hold that press conference uh, against sure. Harvey Weinstein 10, 15 years ago. But now, as you said, this may really reverberate, reverberate with his case as well. So we'll have to see. Yeah, uh, by the way, on the left-hand side of your screen there, uh, there's a vehicle that the helicopter is following. Uh, the helicopter pilot believes that Bill Cosby is in uh, one of those vehicles, likely the lead one with the black roof. We should point out to uh, Geraldo that we're get, beginning to get our first reaction on this. Lisa Bloom, who uh, represented three Cosby accusers, says that uh, the three Bill Cosby accusers I represent and I are disgusted that he is a free man today. She called it a kick in the gut to victims and their advocates, and she said, any other Cosby victims out there, time to come forward. Of course, she recognized Andrea Constant. She was not uh, Andrea Constant's attorney. That was Dolores Triani, but recognizing that Andrea Constant, she said, was so, so dignified, so strong, answering every demeaning question because the prosecutor or the defense attorneys at least were making her out to be a quote con artist. So, uh, you know, everything that she went through, she, she saw Bill Cosby go to jail for a little more than two years, Geraldo, but uh, you have to imagine what these women are thinking today seeing him go free. Bill Cosby, John, as you know, stated very publicly that he was not going to admit to any wrongdoing even if he had to serve the entire mm -hmm. sentence, which at his age is a death sentence, basically. He said he was not going to admit it. He insisted he was innocent throughout. So as you, as you rightfully uh, broadcast and publish the, the anguish of victims who are disappointed here, remember also, Cosby has a wife. Cosby did two years on a case that never should have been brought, legally speaking. He did two years, so... That is the, uh, you know, the, the pound of flesh here. He paid. He paid big time. His career destroyed. His reputation ruined. Uh, he was such a big part of, the, uh, of, of, of pride in, uh, in family, in, in, in black families, in all American families. He was America's uh, dad. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it, what happened to him to be absolutely destroyed? You know, it, it was, it, remember, there's two sides to this story. And as Me Too now in, the, in, in a calmer period is examined objectively, when you don't have the passion of the moment, when there's no longer the, uh, the, a mob screaming for justice, ju the justice that's the same justice as the, the French Revolution and the guillotine, when you have that, you can't, with prudence, see whether this, this, uh, uh, this, accused is the is the monster portrayed 
It's very difficult when everything is screaming and people are, you know, united. And this is the example that we've been trying to tell you for all these years. And, and it becomes more than justice. It becomes revenge. Mm. And now everybody's got to take a deep breath and say, OK, what's the evidence the next time around? Is it enough that the guy gets fired or, or the woman gets, uh, you know, blackballed or whatever it is that happens in civil mm -hmm. uh, or civic society? But the criminal justice system has to be sacrosanct. That has to be the state accuses, the state proves beyond a reasonable doubt. It's not the state accuses and the state can do anything they want to embellish a case, even stuff that's illegal, as the Pennsylvania Supreme Court has clearly indicated in this case. And for goodness sake, to bring a prosecution after the former DA promises that it, you will not be prosecuted, the, making deals, Shannon will tell you, making deals, that's what the criminal justice system is. 90% of the cases or more are resolved by, uh, by plea deals and so forth. In this case, he has a civil deposition that the lawyers wanted desperately for him to testify. The DA promised they wouldn't bring a criminal case. And then the next DA said, screw that. I'm not bound by the previous DA. And because of the passion of the moment, the passion of the moment, they went, they went, they went along with this, uh, this ill-fated prosecution that I predicted in September of 2018 would fail. You did. Okay. Gerardo Rivera, thank you very much for your time jumping in on this. Um, again, the majority of the court there found that was a fatal error, uh, right. a violation of Bill Cosby's rights, uh, and that this couldn't stand. You know, we're starting to get more reaction. We're watching for um, some of the women who have accused, and there are people who are beginning to speak. We'll bring you more of that, but for now, take a quick break. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.